In this video, we're going to discuss aerodynamic drag, and we're going to look at how we go about calculating the drag force. The drag force is essentially the force that the flowing air is going to have on our object, like so. So we have a formula for calculating aerodynamic drag, or the aerodynamic drag force, and it's displayed in the top right hand corner. The force equals CD, which is something called the coefficient of drag, or the drag coefficient. Inside the brackets we have rho, which is density, u squared over 2, where u is the velocity of the air, and we multiply that by the projected area. Now the simplest way to think about the projected area is it's what you would see if you was looking in the direction of the wind. So we can see in the case of this hemisphere, if we were to look end on, we would actually just see a circle. And that circle has a radius of 45 centimetres in this example. Now, coefficient of drag values are normally determined experimentally. And for a hemisphere, when the fluid is flowing at right angles to the flat surface, the coefficient of drag is 1.17. We'll see in a moment that this changes dramatically if the air is flowing towards the curved surface. Because we're dealing with aerodynamics and air and wind speeds here, the density of air at sea level and 15 degrees C is 1.23 kilograms per metre cubed. So we're going to use that as our density of our fluid. So let's run the calculation and then we'll discuss the relevance of the drag force. So we know that F equals the coefficient of drag, 1.17, times the density of the air, 1.23, times the velocity of the air, 25 squared, over 2, multiplied by the projected area. Now we've already said, if we were to look in the direction of the wind, at the flat surface of this hemisphere, what we would see is a circle, and the area of that circle would just be pi times the radius squared. The radius is given as 45 centimetres, which is just 0.45 metres. So our area is pi times 0.45 squared. Now when we run that through the calculator, we get an answer equal to 286.1 newtons. So the force that our solid hemisphere is going to experience as a result of the wind is 286.1 newtons. And that's when the air is flowing normal to the flat side of our hemisphere. Let's switch our hemisphere around and see what effects that has on the drag force. So the first thing to draw your attention to is that when we switch the hemisphere around, the drag coefficient drops to 0.42. Basically, the object becomes more aerodynamic. The air is going to flow more easily over the hemisphere. So we can run the same calculation, and what we would expect to see is that there's less drag on the object because it's more aerodynamic. So we have the force equals the new coefficient of drag, 0.42, times the air density, which remains the same, the fluid velocity, which remains the same, divided by two, and the projected area, that we're going to see when we look at this hemisphere is still going to be the same. If you can imagine looking in the direction of the wind, even though we're looking at that curved surface, we're still going to see a circle of radius 45 centimetres. So our area is still pi times 0.45 squared. That's converting 45 centimetres into metres to get 0.45 metres. Now this time, when we run that through the calculator, we get a drag force equal to 102.7 newtons. So what this shows us is that aerodynamics can have a huge impact on the drag force that an object experiences. Another thing that we need to consider in aerodynamic drag calculations is something called relative wind. So here we've specified that we have a wind speed of 25 meters per second. But what if the hemisphere itself was moving? So in this scenario, we have the wind travelling towards the hemisphere at 25 metres per second. 
but the hemisphere is moving towards the wind at 10 meters per second. It should therefore be apparent in this example that the relative wind, or the rate at which the wind passes over the hemisphere, is actually going to be 35 meters per second. We need to consider the overall effect of the object traveling through the wind. Conversely, if the hemisphere was traveling away from the wind, like so at 10 meters per second, then the relative wind this time is only going to be 15 meters per second. And the reason for that is because the hemisphere is traveling in the same direction. We need the net result. We need to know the speed that the wind's traveling relative to the object. Another scenario would be if the air was stationary, so there was no wind. So in this scenario, the wind speed is zero, but we still have fluid there, we still have air. And as we said before, the air has a density of 1.23 kilograms per meter cubed at sea level. Therefore, our hemisphere moving into the wind is still going to experience a drag, because what we have here is a relative wind speed of 45 meters per second. The movement of the air relative to the object, or the object relative to the air, is 45 meters per second. So when we calculate our drag force, it's important that we first determine the wind speed relative to the object.